I noticed that on the last question, when I did inverse sine up here, I forgot a one. It's supposed to be one, 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 five, six. So I put it in that way here, but I still got the same thing, 4.9 degrees. All right, so let's look at this next problem. Um, the picture was too dark, so I had redrawn it here for you. It says that the Costas want to um, check the survey of a plot of land that they are thinking of buying. The plot is triang triangular with one side on the lakefront, which is right there, with dimensions, dimensions as shown at the right. Well, it's above. Find the measure of the angle between the lake shore and the 450 foot, 452 foot side. So we want to find this angle here is what we're looking for. So I'm going to look and see what I know. I know the 53 degree angle and the side across from it. And I want to find this angle here. It's across from the 320 foot side. So I can use law of sine. So this is for letter A, sine of 53 degrees divided by 452 is equal to the sine of theta divided by 320 feet. So I'm going to cross multiply and I get 452 times the sine of theta equals 320 times the sine of 53. Now, I know that I'm looking for an angle, so I know I'm going to have to do an inverse at some point. The only way to find an angle is to use inverse, but I'm not at that point of doing that yet. Let's get sine of theta by itself by dividing both sides by 452. And I get that the sine of theta equals, this is where I'm going to bring my calculator over, and do 320 times the sine of 53 divided by 452. So that equals 0 0.565 and I, four. I want to do all my rounding at the very end, which is why I'm writing down all those numbers. Now in order to find theta, I'm going to take the inverse sign of that. So theta equals Put this into my calculator, inverse sine 0.56540567089. Now some of you have the feature where you can just copy and paste 34.4 degrees. Okay. Now let's go into part B. Part B, I'm just going to do it right here below. Part B says about how many feet of lake frontage does the plot have? So in other words, we want to know what this is. So um, let's see. Now that I know what this angle is, I know this angle is 34.4. So this angle here is 34.4 degrees, which means I can figure out what this angle here is. 53 plus 34.4. And remember, there's 180 degrees in a triangle, so 180 minus the 87.4. This angle must be 92. Point six degrees. Okay. And because I know that, I can use that information um, if I wanted to to find how many feet are on the lakefront. 
them um, because now I'll use another color. And I'm looking for the lakefront this time. Now, when I choose which um, one to use, do I use the sine of 53 over 452 or the sine of 34.4 over the 320? I would use your original one because this involves an estimate. It's always best to go with exact information. So I'm going to do sine of 53 degrees over 452 is equal to sine of 92.6 divided by, I don't know what it is. That's the lakefront that I'm looking for. So I'm going to cross multiply 452 times the sine of 92.6 is equal to x times the sine of 53. Solving for x, so I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 53. Let's cancel. x equals, let's put this in my calculator, 452 times sine of 92.6 divided by sine of 53. And I get 565.4, everything you can round into the nearest uh, tenth feet. So I found the angle that they had asked for here, and they found how many feet of lakefront we would have, or the close to us would have. All right, so now we're going to look at law of cosine. And I'll be honest with you, law of sine, we can use a lot less than we can use law of cosine, mostly because um, in order to use law of sines, we either need all three angles or we need an angle and the two sides, one of which has to be across from the angle that we know. Law of sines, there's just not as many opportunities to use it as law of cosines. Law of cosines has more opportunities. You need to know how to do both. There are certain problems where you'll only be able to use law of sines and certain problems where you'll only be able to use law of cosine. And the law of cosine, when you first look at it, you're going to think, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to be able to remember this. And I'll tell you, every year, people think law of cosine is one of the easiest things we do. Once you start doing it, it's actually not that bad. So the law of cosine, right, so here is my picture of my triangle. I'm sorry that so small, capital A is across from little a, capital B is across from little b, and capital C is across from little c. Right now I'm going to write the law of cosine, and then we'll worry about the problem that's written here in just a second. Okay, so the law of cosine says that um, if you're looking in, in triangle ABC, and actually I think we're probably, we might not do this example, we'll see. In triangle ABC, little c squared, okay, little c, that means it's a side, is equal to side A squared plus side B squared minus 2AB cosine of angle C. What I want you to notice is that side C and angle C are what we start and end with. So whatever angle we're taking the cosine of, that's the side we're finding. And then the A and the B are the other parts of the formula. Which means we can write this formula for any one of the sides. We could say 
that b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of capital B. And notice, b squared and capital B, and then these are the other sides. Or we could say a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. But notice, this has to match up with this, okay? So we're going to come down here to this next example, and we are going to, um, actually, what I might do is have us uh, change this actually and use this example here. It's written here, and draw it on this triangle. I think that's actually what we're going to do. Okay, so it says, um, the example up here says that the sides of a triangle have lengths 7.1, 3.9, and 7.1. that says 7.1 both times? It does. Okay, so we have 7.1, 7.1, and we have 3.9. So that's what we're going to do. And the question asks us to find the measure of the smallest angle. Well, we know that the smallest angle has to be across from the smallest side. So this right here is the angle that we're looking for. We can call it X if we want to, and I'd probably call it a capital X because it's an angle. And so I always highlight the angle and the side across from it because they're going to be this part here in the formula. Okay? Which means this side here squared, 3.9 squared is equal to the other sides, 7.1 squared plus 7.1 squared minus 2 times 7.1 times 7.1 times the cosine of I don't know what, so I'm going to write x there. Now you have to be really careful um, in what you do next. This is where a lot of people start making mistakes. All right, let's go ahead and do that 3.9 squared, 3.9 squared, 15.21. So 15.21. I can add these, and I can get this together, but what you can't do is add, subtract. Order of operation says that all of this goes together because multiplication happens before subtraction. So what I'm going to do now is this next part here. I can do 7.1 squared plus 7.1 squared and I get 100.82 minus, and do this next part, 2 times 7.1 times 7.1 and I get 182, that's because, just because these are the same, that's why. 2 times, yeah, I did that correctly. All right. Now, you cannot subtract and say that this is 0. It's not, because this is attached to the cosine of x. You have to subtract this. You're trying to solve for x. Subtract this from both sides. Let's see, 15.21 minus 100.82, negative 85.61 equals negative 100.82 cosine of x. I then divide, and then I take the inverse to find.